Greetings. Welcome back. Um, I had one of the viewers ask me about commercial soil amendments. Bill, what kinds of amendments do you buy? Well, the answer was real simple. I don't buy any. <laughs> But that doesn't mean I don't know a thing or two about them, uh, considering I was in the business of selling soil amendments for uh, a long period of time in my life, so I know quite a bit about the commercial industry on them. Um, yeah, so first off, here on this farm, to begin with, soil amendments are expensive. Uh, and they are shipped from the mainland <laughs> okay uh, we have a few manufacturers here in Hawaii um, but most of it really comes in from the mainland and so you got shipping charges on it uh, and so I tend to stay away from them the only things that I actually buy most of the time other than potting materials for the nursery the nursery I purchase commercial amendments um, usually I use sun grow sometimes I use pro mix um, there's a variety of different professional growers mediums that I use in the nursery and in containers for anything I'm growing in a pot but when it comes to the field well any kind of organic matter that I can get my hands on <laughs> okay anything there's never enough here in a tropical environment uh, carbon or compost is constantly vanishing it does not stay around so all the kitchen garbage for instance anything out of the kitchen like the banana peels the coffee grounds the tea bags all that goes out there actually uh, Post-consumer cardboard is used considerably as mulch. I use it to keep weeds from coming up around plants. Um, we use newspapers. They're used the same way. And once they're wetted, they become like paper mache and glue themselves down. will prevent weeds from coming up. And they turn into a soil amendment over time as the worms eat them away. Um, I grow most of the amendment that I use here. When I'm fighting nematodes, I'll be using marigolds or mustard, and these will get cut and laid on the soil as mulch. Um, I use the perennial peanut, which is a nitrogen fixing creeping legume, uh, as understory for crops. Uh, it's all over here. Right now, I've got a really nice stand of it underneath my sweet corn. Um, I use what they call stick mulch and chop and drop. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, chop and drop is basically you know, planting uh, usually smaller crops like pigeon pea is what I use for chop and drop. Uh, it's a tropical legume. Um, it's perennial, persists four or five years maybe. Um, it can be eaten. It has a pea that is cooked into uh, a rezo con gondoles. Uh, it's the gondoles of Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. Uh, I just come through with a hedge trimmer. I just take my hedge trimmer and I cut that stuff into chunks and I drop it. And I have other crops right next to the pigeon peas. Citrus trees, Jibuta Kaba trees. That then as the debris is dropped it uh, decomposes into the soil and it releases both the nitrogen that's stored in the legume but also the organic matter okay the amendments <laughs> um, we use uh, kukui nut and we use inga at uh, ice cream bean as stick mulch here um, means that the trees are when they're fairly young are coppiced and then the material is dropped uh, around other crops. You grow, say, a row of uh, kukui nut and a row of papaya, a row of kukui nut, papaya, and so on. And then you just come through about three, four times a year. You coppice the uh, um, kukuis and you toss the trash down around the bottoms of the papaya. Kukui fix phosphorus. Uh, inga fixes nitrogen. So. Uh, 
there actually work not only as organic matter but as fertilizer crops okay <clears throat> well so that's what I do here um, my, my reasons why we do it that way every once in a while I have purchased a, a bag of compost here I don't do it very often but I have um, and so I would say the number one manufacturer at least in the western United States I don't know how far east this stuff is going but in the western United States we have Kellogg Cascade Kellogg Cascade was originally uh, the uh, uh, a sawmill operation in California cutting predominantly redwood um, one of the men that I once worked for uh, Bert Bertolero, uh, who uh, ran, it was the owner of Navales Nursery that I ran. Um, he was traveling in Northern California on vacation one day, he saw huge piles of composting sawdust. He says, I can sell that stuff. So he talked to the sawmill operators. They agreed. Uh, they put in a bagging facility and they began bagging the composted redwood uh, uh, and, and shipping it down into the Bay Area where Navales uh, was selling it for them. Well, eventually uh, they had a fire at the sawmill, burned up the rig couldn't cut any more trees they decided oh the heck with it there was more money in making compost than there was in cutting trees and so they went out of the sawmill operation and they just began uh, a soil operation um, and now the, the brand names you will see packages that say Kellogg across the front if you flip them over they usually will say Kellogg Cascade somewhere on the back um, you have another line that it was the premium grade that they produced. Um, it was called Gardner and Bloom. These days it's been shortened mostly to G and B on the bags. If it says G and B, uh, that would be the more natural type line. If you flip it over and look at it, you'll uh, see again Kellogg Cascades name is on the back there. That's their premium line. Uh, at the Navales, when we had Navales, which is now Sloat, no longer, uh, Navales no longer exists, but since we were the ones who helped get Kellogg started in the business, our, almost our entire soil line was custom bagged by them to our formulas. Uh, and so at one time you could have gotten this product with a Navales label, but no longer I suspect there may be some other private labels out there somewhere that these guys bag for I, I, I'm not sure about that uh, but again our bags also said Kellogg Cascade if you look on the back now the reason I like this company <laughs> and I support it is because too much of the amendment sold today is just a bunch of trash uh, and that's kind of a pun because yeah almost all fertilizers and amendments are trash they were something else a waste product left from something you know uh, and so in the case of you know Kellogg it was it was uh, sawmill trash uh, and sawmill trash is yet to this day one of the best materials you can buy if you're trying to buy a soil amendment it's also one of the best materials you can buy if you're trying to buy a potting soil uh, too many of the products today on the back will say municipal waste uh, municipal waste is recycled uh, green stuff from the curb from the pickups now uh, to begin with it's not uniform okay it, it can be almost anything in the world in there when they say that and I don't like this I'm a single source material guy I like to know exactly what it is that I'm using and when you're using municipal waste you're getting anything and everything under the Sun plus you're actually getting um, agricultural chemicals particularly the ones that are used as weed and feed for lawns uh, when they compost the stuff they, they break down the organic matter but that does not break down the chemicals that are used and so they end up getting concentrated 
because the organic matter is reduced in volume as it becomes compost, but the chemical doesn't break down. Um, I've seen some horrible issues, especially in tomato plants, uh, with this. So, again, I like to know where my stuff's coming from. Okay. Now, materials that are good soil amendments, uh, forest product compost, particularly if it's coming from a sawmill, okay it's really good stuff um it will it will really help if the text if, uh, make sure that it's right the particle size if you're using it as a soil amendment it really should be like little matchsticks or toothpicks you know pieces uh, quarter inch particle size stick like so as they get into the soil they start to lay up like lincoln logs and will create loft in the soil for you um yeah, that the, and the wood, the redwood especially, if you can get redwood, it lasts for mm, five, seven years maybe. Okay. Uh, otherwise, um, poultry manures are really, really good too. Uh, so I use a lot of chicken. Chicken is one of the few things that I buy as a dry pelletized manure. Um, the one of the things you want to watch out for are the municipal waste products, the ones that utilize peat. Now, sphagnum moss is acceptable. That's not peat, but it's too expensive to be used as a soil amendment. Use it for propagation, for cuttings, for potting soils, and so on. Um, but the black peat is often thrown in the low price potting soils. It's too fine, it's too mucky, it's too dense, and it really doesn't make a very good medium at all. It just happens to kind of look good because it's very dark. Um, Anyhow, there you have it, folks. Um, yeah, it just, I just watch out for municipal waste in those com in those products. Uh, generally speaking, if you're getting a decent amendment product, you're going to be paying pretty good money for it. The good products are not cheap. Um, and also, I would be looking for an OMRI certification. Uh, o M R I. That's that's it, right? Yeah, uh, Organic Materials Registration Institute. Um, if it's got an OM OMRI sig symbol on the package, then you can uh, pretty much guarantee it's fairly clean stuff. It's got good material in there, and nothing you're going to worry about. Um, but as far as that goes, when it comes to produce, foods, and other things that we consume as humans, we have an organic law. All right, well, that labeling is specific, it's legal, and if it says organic, there's only so many types of things that could have been used there. Unfortunately, this got flipped around when it comes to soils and amendments. Uh, in food, the word natural means almost nothing, okay? I mean, a hot dog's natural, okay? Uh, a fish stick is natural, so is a french fry. Uh, so it's a meaningless term. Well natural is the legal term on amendments and soils and organic is the meaningless one when it comes to soil amendment and fertilizer it's the reverse with food so you're looking for the word organic when you're seeking something you plan to eat and you're looking for the word natural if you're trying to find something that would be the organic equivalent to use on your soil uh, now a, a lot of companies have figured this one out and so uh, the better ones will be labeled natural and organic, I think is the typical way they write this. But when you see bags that say all organic compost, run, that's the garbage. <laughs> okay, it's not the good stuff. If they're using the word organic exclusively, they're basically trying to deceive you because they know that you think organic means it's good. Now, all that means is something in that bag at one time used to be alive and today it's dead aloha folks hang loose have a great spring